If you're new to my channel or new to this series, we are designing a backpack hanger. We 3D printed it after we built it in CAD. Previous to that, we made a matte board mock-up and did a marker rendering, of course, to start it all out. But before that, we ideated and sketched a simple 2x4 version. Now we're trying to find a manufacturer. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. I hope that you like, enjoy, and become a subscriber. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up, and then you hit the bell. Hit the bell again, so you get the little parentheses around it. That way you'll be notified every time I have a new video. Don't forget to check out the design and making merch just below the video on the shelf. T-shirts, hoodies, stickers, leggings, and phone cases. This video is all about the information that you need to pull together to give to a manufacturer to get something made. I call this a design guide. What is a design guide, you say? Some people call it other things, but this is what I refer to as the documentation that you give to a manufacturer to have your thing made. So this design guide is going to serve as the basis for the manufacturer to make something to the way that you designed it. Right? You don't want them to make it in some sort of random fashion or some way that you don't want. You very specifically want them to manufacture something to your specifications, let's say, your dimensions, your size, your finish, your color, all that stuff needs to be specified out to the manufacturer so that they can provide you a quote for the volume of parts that you need, whether it's a hundred, a thousand, a million, a hundred million, it doesn't matter. You need to provide them a guide. These are probably things that they didn't teach you in school, but I'm going to share with you. It's part of the normal design process to get something manufactured. So we started out by capturing some basic images. Next, we're going to go in here and in this case, it's a flat pattern. So we're going to create a drawing or and or a bend table. So this will allow the manufacturer in this case to know how to bend up the sheet metal part, which is what this is. And it's going to tell him the angle of the bends and how many bends there are and where those bends are located. So of course, every product that you design is going to have slightly different manufacturing criteria or processes that they use. In this case, it's a uh, metal or a sheet metal part that is bent to our specifications. So while we're at it, we're just going to add some very basic dimensions so that they, when they look at this thing, they know roughly how much sheet metal they're going to need for each part. I'm not going to fully dimension this out because they can get this information from the DXF file, which is the pattern that they use to cut out the piece with. And they're also going to get uh, a step file ultimately, which is a 3D model. So if you don't get it, I don't like doing drawings kind of dumb. I built the whole thing in the computer. Why should I go and make dimensional drawings? Something's going to be cut out via a computer anyway, so I'm not going to spend my time doing all these dimensions. And yes, there are instances when you do need to do these things fully dimensioned. People don't have the equipment or the technology to do it or whatever, but in this case, a sheet metal part and it should be pretty straightforward for them to grab the dimensions off the step file, which we're creating right here. So, so far we've created some simple screen grabs. We've created a DXF file. We've created a bent um, table and a drawing with some basic dimensions. And we've created this uh, step file, which should have all the dimensions in it that they need. Next, we're going to create this design guide from the screen grabs that we uh, did in the very beginning. And we're going to add some notes here. So we're going to give this thing a title, uh, the name of the product. We're going to put a date on it and we're going to add basic information in here. 
So I think the most important thing for this product is the type of material. In this case, we're gonna be using eighth inch or three millimeter aluminum. That's what I designed for. That's the thickness of the material that I would like the manufacturer to work with so that they can make it to my specification. I do believe that it's gonna be water jet cut. Uh, I suppose it could be laser cut, but from my experience, I think uh, laser cutting is not appropriate for cutting aluminum. I've also noted that I wish it to have an anodized finish. This will allow me to do the same part uh, relatively uh, cost-effectively in different colors. I'm also labeling the different views so that they know what it is that they're looking at. I have a front view and then I have a back bottom view. I think it's also important to note that some machining is going to potentially be required for this product. Uh, I think that we're going to need to machine out the countersinks for the screw holes here. So I note that on the drawing as well. So that way when the manufacturer looks at it for the first time, they can say, oh, some machining may be involved in addition to bending this part. I also note that I want the corners to be softened a little bit, and that can be done in a multitude of ways. Maybe the part is tumbled, maybe the part is routed after it's cut out. Uh, the manufacturer may have different uh, methods or options at their disposal, and I'm open to that. And so I'm just making uh, some adjustments here, making the layout on the page uh, read a little bit better so that things aren't too cramped and that's easily viewable and this is just basic presentation It's something that you probably learned in school industrial design school just for making a nice presentation so that people can quickly and easily read the information and know what it is that they're dealing with all right so now that we have some basic information put together we need to find a manufacturer i already have probably about a dozen manufacturers that i've reached out to but we're going to use an online resource as well that i've never used before but i have known about for quite some time it's called mfg.com so this is a place where uh, you can go to find a manufacturer and submit this package of information that we've put together we take all those files that we've created including a nice rendering and we zip that up and then we're going to upload that onto mfg.com along with our specifications for the project based on uh, what it is they want us to fill out. And then that gets sent out to manufacturers that are paying customers actually on mfg.com to take a look at your package and come back and give you a quote. So like I said, I haven't used this manufacturing service yet, but so far um, it's been pretty decent. I submitted my quote. I was assigned a representative. I spoke with that representative on the phone. They were able to answer some basic questions for me. They uh, assigned a material and a category to help me zero in and hopefully find a manufacturer and start getting some quotes. Uh, I haven't gotten any quotes yet. I pick my date range. I pick um, the volume and the quantity and the location of the manufacturers uh, around the globe that I would like to bid on this project. Uh, kind of what you're looking for in a one-stop shopping place. And so we'll see how this works out on MFG.com. All right, like I said, I have about a list of a dozen or so other manufacturers that I've already submitted this product to, and they are starting to pull quotes together for me. So in the next couple of weeks, we'll see what comes back in terms of numbers, getting a prototype made, that sort of thing, so we can continue on with this project. And I'll keep you updated as things start rolling in and things move forward. The next thing is going to be some sort of an actual metal prototype. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon in the bottom right of the video or below the video. Give it a thumbs up and follow the channel there as well. You want to know about upcoming design content and projects that I'm working on? Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and my favorite Google Plus links below. Also, don't forget to check out all the design and making gear below. Rock on! Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.